Hello everyone and welcome back to Sophie Loves 10. Sorry it's been a week since the last filming but again life I'm going to keep complaining about this. Um, but if you can hear some random noises it's because my dad is downstairs watching TV and he has no concept of noise whatsoever. But I have my top 10 favourite graphic novels with me. I had to go back into the wardrobe and find it again um, and one of them I couldn't find so I'll talk to you about it, but I don't have a physical copy. I will get into them now. These are in no particular order. They're just the top 10 graphic novels of 2016. And yeah, I'll get So the first one is Mouse by Art Spiegelman. And this is a story of Art's father, him talking to Art and re uh, memories of the Holocaust. The Nazis are depicted as the cats and the Jews as mice. And I think it's done a really clever way. It's a really interesting story it's all black and white my version i've got the complete mouse um really really like harrowing story but because of its art form it's quite a nice flick through um graphic novel and i really enjoyed this and i thought it was a really nice insight to another story and a good way of showing it especially using animals because it actually in a way makes things um harder hitting because the we know that mice and cats don't get along um, so it's kind of ironic in a way, the way that Art's done this, but um, the artwork in here is great as well, and I unfortunately missed a talk with Art. Um, he was doing it at the Barbican, I believe, in London, and I missed that, so I was really gutted, but um, really interesting. I would really recommend it, especially if you're interested in any Auschwitz, anything about Auschwitz or um, the Holocaust or anything like that. Really good. The second book is Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughan, I believe. Yes, and some other people as well. Um, and this is... I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. I'm kind of like sitting on the fence. I did give this fight one five stars, but I'm going to have to get the next one. Um, so I'm not sure if it should be in my top ten, but I'm still really intrigued by the story. It's about a, a group of girls that do paper round, and they come across some sort of like alien life force or something. And I read this one ages ago, but I think the thing that made it five stars for me is the artwork. I mean, we know Brian K. Vaughan's artwork is really good from Saga, but the colours are just amazing. I think that's what made it five stars, because visually it's such a nice thing to look at. Um, but story-wise, I can't really remember the story that well, and um, I do want to pick up volume two, because I only have volume one, so I can't really say a lot about this one, unfortunately. The next one, however, I have got volume two and I've been like saving it to read when I get um, my next day off because I'm so excited to read it. And this is I Hate Fairyland and this is by Scotty Young. I really, really like the story. This is basically a girl who um, goes to fairyland and every other girl or boy that goes to fairyland does some quests and then they get to leave. They find a key and they leave and go back to their everyday lives. Um, this girl, however, can't um, complete it. She just can't get out. And she's like in her 30s or something. Um, nearly 30, so six year old girl's body, and she's been there for 30 years. And she just is the hilarious character. You can see her there. Um, and she just like lives on sugar. She's still a child, but she's been there for 30 years. So it's like the effects that it has on you. The artwork's fantastic. It's quite gory um, in like a really funny way and it's just really like um, a lot of satire in there and I just really really enjoyed this a lot. Um, I've got the second one and I'm ready to read the second one. I think it's just it's like funny in like a sick way <laughs> like laughing at it but because it's done in such like a childish cartoon way it's um, just hilarious. It just works really, really well. And I thought the whole concept of it is brilliant. So that is I Hate Fairyland. The next one's Elizabeth's a bit different tone. I've got two that are actually novels that have been changed into graphic novels. So the first one is Noughts and Crosses by Marilee Blackman. I love Noughts and Crosses. Um, I've read quite a few of Marilee Blackman's books um, as a child. And I thought I would pick this one up when I saw it. And I, I, Noughts and Crosses is one of those books that you can really visualise everything that's happening. So I thought, I want to see how Mary Blackman actually wanted the characters to be completely depicted. And they're pretty much true to how I thought of them. Um, I will show you, it's all in black and white, as it, as it should be. 
because that is the concept of the book. It shouldn't have been. If it was in colour, I think it would have been disappointing. Um, but we've got all the characters. It's the same story as Noughts and Crosses. Um, I think it's... If you're a visual person and you get more from comics than books, just read this instead of reading um, Noughts and Crosses because I think you get just as much out of this than you do as the book, which is fantastic because usually one or the other is lacking a little bit, but this is still really, really good. And another one, as I said, is Interview with Vampire by Anne Rice. Anne Rice, I absolutely love the the concept of interview with vampire and I love um, Claudia so when I saw that she was doing Claudia's story in graphic novel form I thought I had to get it and I ordered it I think online um, this one however is kind of grayscale I'll show you except for scenes with blood if I remember rightly there's some you can see the blood is all red but the rest of it is on grayscale um, it's very, it's kind of manga-esque, so it's done quite, it's almost like romantic, the way the artwork's done, or, and I feel that that really works to Claudia's story because it is kind of um, a romantic story that she has, um, especially with one of the vampires that she, Louis, she's kind of in love with him, but kind of his dad, uh, he's kind of her dad, and it's all very weird, um, and I really enjoyed this a lot, I thought it was really good, and if you did like Interview the Vampire, I would recommend picking this up because it's quite a nice um, added extra to the story and we get more insight in Claudia's life. Now this one will come to no surprise whatsoever because everyone and their mother loves this graphic novel and this is Saga. I've got the first one here. I've been reading all of the individual papers as well and since like a couple of months ago I've stopped so I need to go to my comic book shop and pick up my papers um, because I need to catch on to the story more. I love this story. If you don't know what it's about it's basically about two different alien races um, and they come together and they have a baby. They fall in love and this is the implications of the child, kind of like a Romeo and Juliet story but in space. It is fantastic. Brian K. Vaughan really has a knack for storytelling. I'll show you some of the artwork. I, haven't, I actually can't remember what the first one is. It's like the story's changed so much since then. There is a little bit of nudity in there, actually quite a lot of nudity in some of it. Um, quite a lot of it's quite raunchy as well, so maybe not for the younger readers. But if you're an adult and you like a good graphic novel, I would definitely recommend this one a lot. I think I've given like all of the saga books five stars to be honest with you, I just absolutely love them. The next one, also probably no um, surprise, I love all of them and I really, I would like them to bring out another one. This is volume three, which is the last volume of Alex and Ada. This is by Jonathan Luna and Sarah Vaughan. I wonder if Sarah and Brian are related. That'd be really cool. But this is just beautiful. It's such a beautiful love story. It's it's kind of like that program, which I can't remember the name with now, one with the robots. Um, but this is basically Ada, who's a um, robot, um, and Alex has her as like an assistant. I think his grandmother gives it to her as a present. Um, but the robots have been um they've been like going going into humanity like there's a there's like a space inside ada's mind which shows like a humanity bit so a lot of them have been like there's a switch that, that gets flicked and then they can feel and understand things and they're not just robots anymore so that's a very fine line between are we creating um, machines or are we creating people if we make robots as people and the whole thing is just so interesting, it really is, and the love story is just gorgeous. Like the way they, um, I'll show you some artwork as well, the way it's all laid out, it's very very simplistic, but done in a really really nice way, and it is beautiful, honestly, like the whole thing, it's just really really nice. I really really enjoyed this a lot, I'm just looking at it in my camera. Um, I love the artwork, the story was just great. Um, I would like another one of these. If you if you know if they're making any, please comment down below and we'll chat about it later. But this is just, I love it. Absolutely love it. One I'm going to talk about, I don't actually have it because I can't find it anywhere, but I spoke about it in a recent video and that's Nimona. Noelle Stevenson, of course. Um, the same is the graphic, is the artist for Rainbow Rouse books, isn't it? I believe it's the same person. 
Um, but Nimona is about a shape-shifting girl who meets a evil villain and their story together. It's really good. I like, really, really like Noelle's um, artwork. It's really kind of unusual. And I really like Nimona's character. She's a badass and she can shapeshift and she does all the time. And it's really good. It's more of a kind of in between young adult, um, I would say more young adult kind of graphic novel, but it's really interesting and I really liked it a lot. So I gave that five stars. And I've got the last two here. The first one I read ages ago and I read it in one sitting. So I can't really remember the whole story, um, but I remember thinking this is such a good, it's kind of reminiscent to Alex and Ada. Um, and this is The Sculptor. And this is so good. It is about a guy who makes a deal with the devil, I believe. And everything that he sculpts comes to life. But he falls in love. I'm going to have to reread this because I really can't remember the whole story. But I remember thinking this is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it was going to have to be reread. But the artwork's great. I'll show you again. It's all I, I really do enjoy when the artwork is like in a scale. So this is blue scale artwork and also reminiscent Alex Nader we have one cutaway and then another one another one another one where they're all kind of like very simple so if, if the author wants us to slow down and this is Scott McCloud if you're wondering um, slow down and think about what's actually happening on the page he'll have like one bit that and the next bit where he like turns his head and keeps turning his head um, which I really enjoy I really think that's a really effective way to show a pause or a break within a graphic novel and I really enjoyed this. This is going to have to be a reread because I can't remember the whole story. The last one we've come to and this one is another scale um, one. It's a purple scale book and that's this is This One Summer which is by Gillian Tamaki and Mariko Tamaki. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, completely butchering it. But this is about a um, summer trip and it's uh, two girls who are friends and what happens during their summer camping trip. So we've got a purple scale wash, which I think is really nice. It's kind of like hazy and dreamlike. Um, I really enjoyed this. It was just a nice story of the two. The artwork's really good. Um, there's not a lot to say. Like, it's just about what happens during their time, like discovering. It's kind of like um, a building's Roman book, so like coming of age. And then to like growing up over the summer and what happens to them and stuff like that. I really enjoyed it. It's like really nice to read. The artwork was really well done, as I said, and I just thought it was a nice, nice graphic novel to read. So they are my top ten graphic novels for 2016. What did what graphic novel did you enjoy during 2016? Let me know in the comments. And I will be back with another video soon. Goodbye everyone, have a fantastic day.